Tom is one of four brothers. And, uh, you know, he's one of the better athletes of those four. He was always on teams where uh, four boys would play uh, touch football. And, of course, he was the youngest of the four. And so uh, on every play, he was open. And he told people that he was open. And he said, why didn't you throw me the ball? And that would go on and on and on. So pretty soon you started to throw him the ball, and he could, he could catch it. Tom was a real pleasure to coach. He was a lot of fun to coach. Uh, he was a guy that was a tremendous athlete. He was smart as a whip. Uh, he could run our offense. And, you know, every time we went out, he knew exactly what to do and how to perform it and did it well. And, uh, you know, he was extremely, extremely competitive. Uh, he liked to win. He liked to play hard and he liked to win. And uh, you know what? Showed up on the field. He was the ultimate competitor. Um, he hated to lose. Tom, Tom always had a um, real unique sense of humor. Um, he was an affable guy. Tom was, uh, he was, he's just got a great personality. Uh, he's easygoing, uh, fun loving. Uh, the guys like to be with him and they like to kid him. Uh, and he can take it. He was the uh, WCL Player of the Year. Uh, he was the CCS uh, Senior of the Year. Uh, and he was uh, our team leader. He was the guy that our players looked up to. Tom was the uh, quarterback, he was the trigger guy. So he had to both run, pass, and make good decisions all the time, and he did it great. Playing with Tom was pretty intense. Somehow Tom was able to be vocal and be intense, but it was never about him. And it was always about the team. He didn't try to be anybody else. He was confident in his abilities, he was confident in his team, he was confident in his coaches. And when you have that clarity within your heart and in your mind about what you need to do, you can do incredible things. He was Bellarmine through and through, and um, I, just, I just remember how important it was for him to um, not only um, embrace that tradition, but to carry it on. Tom stays very close to, to uh, what's going on at Bellarmine. I think he believed that there was more to this school than athletics and there was more to being a student here than simply athletics. Tom's got a generous heart. Uh, he always has and always will. Uh, he's, he he uh, has uh, his generosity to Bellarmine as well as to outside the community. I think the one thing that I can say is I've been coaching Bellarmine for 29 years. We've had one undefeated team in 29 years, one undefeated team, and that was the 1990 uh, Bellarmine foot, varsity football team. And Tom McNeil was a lot, has a lot to do with that. And he's a winner. First, um, I'm so proud of Dan being inducted into the Bellarmine Hall of Fame. I think well-deserved. One of the great athletes and great soccer players uh, ever at Bellarmine. Um, I will always remember Dan as a player as probably the best defender in the school's history. He's one of those guys that a coach will often say, boy, I wish I had 11 of those guys. I mean, if I had 11 of those guys, we'd be really successful. I mean, Dan was the kind of guy who just worked real, extremely hard every day, trying to be a better soccer player. Um, took criticism, you know, took criticism to heart, meaning he took criticism like, I need to listen to this because it's gonna make me a better soccer player. You knew going into the game that you didn't even have to worry about Dan because he was gonna, you know, he was gonna do his job and make sure he made other people look great. I don't think I ever had the discipline to worry about his doing his job both as a player and as a student and as a member of this community. Completely responsible. He was what you might characterize as a quiet leader. He, he just kind of uh, went about his play to the best of his ability, which was substantial, uh, knowing that he had the confidence of, of the coaches and his teammates behind him. My memories are a quiet guy, always worked hard at practice, always gave his best at all times, one of the very best students at Bellarmine uh, with a terrific grade point average, accepted into Stanford University. Uh, just a model as a leader, a model as a player. 
I mean, as a player, Dan was, you know, I would say he was, he was the glue of the team. He was the glue between the defense and the offense. So Dan wasn't a guy who was going to dribble four guys and score some spectacular goal. Dan just never made a mistake. You could just count on him, you know, the entire time. I mean, I just can't remember him ever really getting beaten badly or, you know, having, you know, giving up a goal. I just don't remember anything like that. The best kind of leadership is to be an example, to be a model. And Dan, that's what I'm most proud of, of Dan. He would just do what was asked of him and uh, lead by example. And I think that for others of us around him, uh, it, it provided a source of motivation for, for us to try to elevate the caliber of our play and live up to our full potential. So I think that um, if, if there's anything that is kind of the, the crux of why he's deserving of this tremendous honor, it's the fact that uh, he, he's an excellent athlete in his own right, but what he was able to do the other players around him. I remember that feeling that Dan was the young man that I could One of the um, bonds that I have with Ian is that I had them all four years. We had workouts in the morning, we had workouts in the afternoon, we'd go twice a day. Uh, so I would see Ian there, I'd see him on the campus, we'd work out on the weekends. Um, we were always together for those four years. We traveled to meets. So I got to know a young man who became a, a great leader by his senior year. Ian was part of a, you know, we had a lot of great runners on the team, top to bottom, but he was part of sort of the cream of the crop. Uh, an elite group um, and so it was you know for myself it was maybe a slightly above average runner at best um, it was inspiring to see what these guys were doing and what Ian brought to the table was impressive he quickly moved up to the varsity team very quickly and just started being one of our top runners right off the bat and then each year subsequent year just got better and better and better he was always a super humble guy um, but just a hard worker as I recall and, and I remember those first few races in my sophomore year staring at his back at the finish line was was a was an eye-opener for me and it made me a better runner honestly. I always had him in kind of being like an assistant coach um, with the guys sometimes when when they have an older guy coaching them it's nice to have somebody within their group that understands everything that goes on. He was friendly with everyone else um, he never, and I'll use the word again, never put his ego in front of being friends with others. And I would see him when I walked across the campus, uh, um, not just with the cross country or trap team members, but with other members from his junior high school, um, members in his class, uh, different students in his classes. He always intermingled with others. A genuinely, uh great human being to be around. I mean, he's always, to this day, the first guy to come up to, to talk to you at a, at, a, at a Bellarmine event, an alumni event. He's always the first person to ask you how your family's doing. Inevitably, there was always fun adventures with Ian, and I think the, probably the coolest thing is, as serious as he took the sport, he always had fun with it. You know, he would run, he'd win, or he'd place, or, you know, it'd be great. And then the moment the race stopped, it was just Ian, your buddy, that you went to school with. By the time he got to senior year, Ian, at the end of the season, ended up being the CCS champion, which, at, at that time, there was only one division. Now there are five. So he was the top runner in the entire Central Coast section. Um, and he pulled the team along to just an outstanding win. And if you don't know anything about cross country, the lowest, lowest score wins. And at the uh, CCS meet, you get whatever place you take, you get a point. So if you're first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, a shutout is 15 points. Well, that team was first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. The only team ever to do it. And uh, it will never be repeated. When I met Tony, he, he was nine, ten years old. We were competing in, as a, you know, age group swimmers um, at the time, and he he was always a little 
skinnier, we'll say, than, than I was, and uh, a fighter uh, in, in as a racer. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we ended up at Bellarmine together. And Tony was a was a really great athlete um, on the in the pool and out of the pool. Uh, probably the best word I would say about Tony is competitor. Uh, Tony never saw an obstacle in his way. And if it was in his way, he was going to blow it away. He was going to knock it out of the way, and he was going to fight through it and overcome it and uh, just show somebody that he could do it. He was just so quick um, in every way. I mean, fast in a straight line in a pool. Um, he had a very quick release on his shot uh, so he could get shots off. Um, you know, he was tenacious and very offensively minded. Certainly loved to shoot the ball. Um, he, Tony loved to use speed, and you know, he was he won the uh, 100 free at CCS, went 45 plus, and took second the 50 free. Went a faster time in the trials than he did the finals, but got touched out by a kid from Los Gatos. But whenever the ball turned over, he was gone. And internationally, that was great. In 30 meters of water, Tony had a lot of water to go with, and he used it, and he loved to shoot the ball. There's nothing more in water polo that he didn't like than to shoot a ball. Very quick, very good athlete in, in a lot of different sports. Um, a very supportive teammate. Um, and, and a guy who was just who was pretty hilariously funny. Um, you know, we all we all had a great time. We swam when we were really young, um, and then you know he went on in, in water polo. I went on in swimming, and uh, he had made the national team in water polo for the World University, and I had made it in swimming. Um, and that was kind of at the end of our uh, careers. And um, being there with him, and and just kind of, I remember at the time. And reflecting on all that we have done and how long um, I've known them, uh, I wish I had a picture of us um, at you know as members of the national team. Uh, but that, in my mind, um, was a, a special time uh, to share that with him, uh, and I think speaks a lot to the class um, and, and the great talent that we had on the team. When I look at Tony and think about Tony, I just enjoy him laughing, remembering laughing at a lot of things, him turning red when he got a little bit tired or really getting into things and just willing to do anything for his friends, his teammates, uh, for anybody. He was a very easy guy to coach and just, you know, a fun guy to be around. Let me add my endorsement to the spe this special recognition for Coke Edmund as a track athlete for Bellman. Uh, I will do so in providing some, some statistics or some data in that regards. The CCS has conducted a, a track championship meet for 46 years. In those 46 years, 10 Bellman athletes have won individual events. The only person amongst those 10 individuals, of which Coke Edmund is one, was, was Mr. Edmund, and he personally won two events in two consecutive years. He is the only person that has achieved that, 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 that significant accomplishment. The track puts an emphasis on stars and the way they score the, score the meets. Fortunately for Bellman in 1994, Coke Edmund was one of those stars. Coke. Was, uh, he was the, the kind of athlete that most coaches dream of having. Um, he could do pretty much anything, and he pretty much did everything, anything and everything we asked him to do. Uh, he was one of the first ones to step up to do it, um, either running the mile relay or running an open quarter if we needed it for points. I personally have had the pleasure of watching him run the hurdles, and a lot of people that run the hurdles, it's like they run over them. And that's the guy, if you watch Coke Edmund run the hurdles, it's like he ran through them. And it, it's like, wait a minute, how did he get by those things? It didn't seem like he hopped over them, he just ran through them. And my point is, is his technique was, was that good that it literally looked like he was just running straight along and there was nothing, nothing in his, in his way. 
Whenever the, his event was coming up, it was almost like the, the track meet stopped for a short time to watch his race. Well, Coke was a very quiet individual to the gun went off. And then he was a massive, massive man coming down the, down the track. Afterwards, he'd shake hands with everybody. He was always a gentleman. And so everyone respected him for his talent and also the way he handled himself whenever he was in a race. You can look at the stats and see how dominant he was. You can look at all the records. But what a lot of people don't know about Coke is that Coke has a great sense of humor. Um, when he's done with his event or when he's getting ready for, for his event, um, he'd often flash this just winning smile. That's all I could, I could think of it as. I mean, he had a great sense of humor. He was a, um, a teammate that challenged other, his other teammates to be better. Um, and he always delivered, but that sense of humor is what what kept it from being overbearing because clearly none of us could live up to his level of dominance um, on the track. Um, but uh, he put everyone at ease with his smile and his, his coolness, his easygoing demeanor. So uh, it was it was a joy and a privilege um, to run with Coke, um, not not only as, as an athlete and as a person at Bellin, but just as a friend as well because I know him pers I do know him personally. I want to give Coke credit because he he improved as a person, he improved as a runner, he improved as uh, in the academic world and the classroom every single year that he was here. And by his senior year, uh, he was not only respected on the track, but he was respected in the classroom by members of the Bellman community. My hearty congratulations to Coke. I should also quickly add that his, his abilities and accomplishments were recognized and that he was recruited to run at UC Berkeley where he also had a successful full year for four years. Several years ago, I was up, up having breakfast one morning and reading the San Jose Mercury News, and I happened to flip to the obituary section and was saddened to, to read that Matt Ramirez had, had died. And obviously was saddened by the fact that he had died at such a young age. But in reading the article, I couldn't help but reflect on him as a, as a, a football player at Bellman. The publicity for tonight's event uh, mentioned that Matt was one of the best running backs or maybe the best fullback in the 70s and the 80s. And I would personally edit that statement and that in my opinion, and I have been going to Bellman football games since 1977, and I would argue that Matt Ramirez was the best fullback that I have ever seen in a Bellman uniform. Matt was a power runner so he could uh, hit the holes relatively hard, but he was also very physical. So when he you know, was tackled through them, went around them, he had good speed. Uh, so that's how we utilize him in that offense, and then we'd offset that with passing. Off the field, uh, he, he worked hard. He worked hard to be the best at his position and for the team, and I think that's where he you know, played a leadership role that was, uh, worked well for our team. He had size, he had speed, he had quickness. This all came together into the form of a very, very competitive player. He was a fullback power back, but also with great speed, and he could take over a game. Uh, but I definitely, you know, believe over the years and looking at all the great players, Matt was probably one of the top five running backs that I've seen since the late 70s here at Bellman. Matt Ramirez, one of the all-time Bellman greats. Matt displayed every trait of a winner. Great ability, toughness, character, desire, and a consistently unselfish attitude. The coaching staff considers Matt one of the finest running backs in CCS history. To me, when I reflect back is, you know, he was a great player, no question about it. But he also put in the time and effort that was needed to make him a great player. And I think that was the, what I see as it exemplifies being a Hall of Fame member. It's under sadder circumstances than I guess I would have personally, personally liked because when I saw, I read about his death and reflected upon him, him as a player, I concluded that as a member of the, of the Hall of Fame selection committee, we screwed up. We should have inducted him and would like to have inducted him while he was still with us where he could personally have enjoyed it. 
but nevertheless, a well-deserved recognition and a special, special tribute to Matt Ramirez. We knew we were talented uh, going in. We knew that CCS uh, was not going to be easy to win CCS championships, uh, but we knew that we were capable of more. Um, before CCS, usually for the last couple of weeks, we come back for taper time when you back off on the training so that your energy is high for the big meet. Um, that, that I always look back on as a very fun time because then we, at that point we left our club teams, came here to Bellarmine uh, to work out, um, you know, and that's when we could uh, get psyched up together, um, you know, have the camaraderie uh, that, w that was really going to help us and, uh, you know, and, and look forward to really uh, to crushing everyone else. <laughs> Major contributors to the success of, of this team were uh, Greg Schaefer, Jeff Cronin, and Tony Barnes. Greg, Sch Greg Schaefer excelled in the breaststroke and the individual medley, and also therefore was a major member of a record-setting individual medley relay. Jeff Cronin was a phenomenal backstroke swimmer. In fact, his, his record set in 1989 was not broken as a school record until last year. Tony Barnes was also a very fast freestyle swimmer. And also, as in an ind winning the individual event was also a major contributor to their to the relay teams. When I think about those guys, there weren't a lot of close games with those guys. We sort of dominated swimming and water polo at that point. It was a great team to be around. Um, it was just nice to be part of them and everything because you didn't have to worry. You knew when you went to the pool, they were going to swim and they were going to compete and they were going to compete against each other as well as other teams. And if it came down to the last relay, we were gonna win because one of those guys was gonna step up and put everything on the line and not let it happen. One of the things though that uh, I think really set us apart was, uh, you know, that we had strong friendships. Um, like I said, going back, we knew each other since we were uh, little kids. And I mean, even to this day, um, you know, these are guys that I know well, that I still hang out with all the time. Being able to be there, to be supportive of one another, um, you know that that's a big deal for success particularly in a sport like swimming which can be a grind right I mean you need uh, the support of your teammates to pick you up yeah it was just fun you know to be around those guys I can't say you coach them you just you're around great athletes and they strive to be what they are and uh, I just appreciate them and it was fun and they made it fun for me drove me crazy at times but they were fun and I consider them really good friends. So when I think about all the great swimmers that have come before us and, and after, um, I do want to recognize uh, one person that uh, ha has been there from the very beginning and has worked with a variety of talent um, from Olympic champions to you know, B-meet swimmers, um, making everyone feel part of uh, the team each year. Um, and everyone part of this great tradition, and uh, that's Coach Larry Rogers. And uh, uh, he, was, uh, he was great to me as a swimmer and, and as a water polo player. And uh, you know, this, this national championship that uh, we won uh, was very much uh, inspired by him and, and helped us keep the faith and uh, 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 operating as a unit and uh, uh, you know, the, the 20 or so CCS championships, uh, that's a phenomenal achievement um, and I just think uh, as much as we're celebrating here as a team, he should uh, uh, share in um, the honor um, that, uh, as, as part of the team uh, and as, as of course the leader of the program.